Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I am talking about something that's very, very important to your makeup application, foundation. Okay, foundation, if it is done right and properly, the rest of your makeup doesn't even matter. Nice, well taken care of skin is key whenever you're doing anything with foundation. One of my main focuses, especially when I'm working on makeup on my clients, I make sure the skin is right. If you got the skin right, everything else will flow properly. I'm going to get very, very detailed in this video to starting from skin prep, brushes, and types of foundation. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Right now, y'all, I am naked. This is my skin without nothing on, okay? First things first, skincare. I've already done my skincare, so I've washed my face, I've toned it, and I've moisturized. I have oily skin, so I like to use Demario Badescu. I'm gonna have a skincare video coming up soon, but that's what I've done already. Make sure that your skincare products are directly targeted to your skin type. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I take my Mario Badescu Rose Water Spray and I spray my face. I love this for a prep on all skin types, especially drier skin. Just really helps to waken up the skin, make it nice and fresh, and gives you a nice solid canvas to go with. Next up, primers. So if you saw my video maybe a week or so back, I did a video on are primers really necessary. I feel like for me right now on my skin type, Primers aren't necessary, and I'm more so talking about mattifying primers. I have very oily skin, and I feel like no matter what primer I use, even if I have on makeup or not, my natural oils are just going to push through. So for me, I've accepted it. I'm okay with it. I just blot my face throughout the day, and it's good as new. I test it out one side with the primer, one side without, and they look the exact same. So as far as I'm concerned, no mattifying primers. When summer kicks in, it gets a little bit warmer. My mind might change. If so, I'll keep you, I'll keep you guys posted. But um, no mattifying primer. But what I do like for my skin, I like the L'Oreal Magic Perfecting Base or Benefit Professional because I have large pores, okay? I don't know if you guys can see them right now because I'm not really zoomed in tight, but I have oily skin, I have textured skin, I have acne prone skin, and I have large pores. I got it all going on. I feel like more of a blurring product versus a mattifying primer is going to be very, very crucial for my skin because this helps the found, this helps to give the illusion of my skin being smooth. So I feel like this, if my oil is gonna be coming through, at least let my skin be oily and smooth, all right? So I'm going to put this on, and I love this. I think I like this more so than the Benefit Professional. I've been using this one for years. I use it if I am not wearing makeup. I use it under my makeup. I've used it on top of my makeup before. It just makes everything go on nice and smooth. All right, so once you get on your primer, again, remember, tweak it for your skin needs. This is what my skin needs. Your skin needs might be a little bit different, different than mine, and that is all good. Just make sure that it works for you. When I'm working on a client that has drier skin, I hydrate. I do go in with more moisturizer. I'll use the Cetaphil facial moisturizer and I'll just go ahead and put that all over, let it sink in, and then I will use the Smashbox Photo Primer Oil. Put that on, let that sink in, and it's good to go. I think skin prep for drier and mature skin is way more intense than oily skin. So that's what I like to do for my dry skin clients. Next up, foundation. There are so many. My number one foundation that I always recommend for everyone, I'm talking all skin tones, all skin types, and all ages, is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation. That foundation looks good on any and everyone. So that's always my first recommendation. For drier skin, that's a little bit difficult for me because I myself don't have drier skin, but just from what I try to mess around with on clients, I always like to give a drugstore and then a little bit of a higher end foundation choice. So for drugstore, the Maybelline Fit Me Do that's a great one. L'Oreal Pro Glow, that's a great option. Again, dry skin, you can do the Makeup Forever Ultra HD, but they have one in stick form, and I think that one's really, really good for dry skin as well. Another, let's see, moving on up to the higher end, you can do the Too Faced Born This Way. My only hang up on that one is, I like that one on me in the winter time when it's cooler, but as far as the shade range goes for deeper skin tone girls, there's really not so much going on. Those are 
some choices for dry skin. Like I said, I don't have it, so I really can't speak for a hundred percent. But you want to bump to oily skin? Let's talk about it. So, oily skin, my favorite ones. We can do the Kat Von D Locket Foundation. Girl, that'll keep you matte for the rest of your life. Okay, that's a really, really good, beautiful foundation. That is my foundation if I need, if I am working all day, if I'm doing fashion shows and I need to be beat for the cheap seats. That's the foundation that I'm choosing. It's gorgeous. It lasts all day long. Another good one of my favorites is the MAC Match Master. That one does me good. I like the Maybelline Fit Me. Matte and Poreless, that's a great one. The L'Oreal Pro Matte is a great one. And then there's something else that I like too. NARS Velvet Matte Skin Tint, that's good too. But for today, I'm going to be using my MAC foundation. And this is the MAC Nourishing Waterproof Foundation. I don't know where my bottle went. It disappeared. I was traveling and I decided because I was trying to pack light, I just put it in these little jars here and I don't know where the bottle went. So this is the foundation that I'm gonna be using today. This foundation is great for oily skin. It's gonna nourish it. You're not gonna get crazy, crazy oily and it lasts all day long. I've worn this out at a concert in June outside my face stayed beat so that says a lot of course i got oily just blot and go i'm telling you blotting will save your life all right so we picked our foundation next up tools okay there are so many makeup brushes me i am not someone that dips and dabbles with different types of brushes because especially on myself i feel like honestly i just need two of every kind of brush so that way i have a backup if one is dirty i'm not one of those makeup girls that needs to have tons and tons and brushes for myself now for my kit that's a whole nother story especially if i'm doing a huge um, bridal party fashion shows and yes i need a lot more brushes but on myself not so much so here are a few foundation brushes we're going to talk about them and we're going to break them down one by one. First one here traditional flat foundation brush this is what i do for my clients so when i'm doing my clients foundation i take my little my little mixing plate here because I don't ever use just one foundation on a client. I always like to mix and choose. So I'll take this, I'll put it on my little plate here and I'll mix it up. And I like to take the flat foundation brush just to apply it on the face where I need it. And then what I will do to further blend it, I'll just take one of these good old cosmetic sponges here and then just blot it out on the face. Another option that I like because I'm not a huge fan of foundation brushes. I feel like with foundation brushes, especially like the flat top kabuki or the um, or the buffing brushes, I feel like no matter what, you're going to get streaky and you have to go in with some sort of sponge. That's just my experience. That's just me. Everybody's different. So for the buffing brush I like to use, this is by Real Techniques here. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I'm in focus. This is by Real Techniques, and I use this to buff in foundation as well and blend things out. Now, my favorite type of foundation brush to use are the stippling brushes. This one here is by Mikasa Beauty. This one's bigger. This is a duo fiber one. And then this one here is by Real Techniques. I like these, especially if I'm working on anyone that has huge pores or needs a little bit more coverage because this gives you more of an airbrush look. You don't swirl this one all over the face. You simply stipple it, you push it into the skin and it looks natural, it blends. And if you have large pores, it's like it just kind of go grazes right on over it and it gives you a really, really flawless finish. So this is my favorite foundation brush of choice, the stippling brush. And then now, last but not least, what I use on a day-to-day -day basis on myself every single day, all day. Beauty blenders are great for blending out foundation. If you have way too much foundation on or you just put picked up a little bit too much, the beauty blender will soak that up for you. I feel like anyone that likes a super, super full, full coverage foundation look, they might not be a fan of the beauty blender because the beauty blender does soak up the foundation. But when you think about it, you want it to look as natural as possible right so i feel like the beauty blender does a really really good job it does take away some foundation but it leaves you just enough to get a flawless finish how do we apply it with this foundation here i'm going to what do i want to do i you know what i'll do two different ways i'll do one side with the beauty blender and one side with the stippling brush because those are typically what i would do so for my foundation what i like to do is start off in the center of my face 
and work my way out. That is how I do my foundation on myself and my clients. I don't want to stick my finger in here and make a mess, so I'm just going to take this little concealer brush here, and I'm just going to dot it on my face. Again, focusing more so in the center. Next, taking a damp beauty blender. Make sure if you're using a beauty blender, it is damp, because if not, you'll have a hard time blending it out. Okay, now starting in the center of my face here. And I'm just pouncing motions. And then I just like to work my way out. I'm going to take a little bit more because I didn't really grab too much. Let me go put a little bit more on so you guys can see. Alright, so starting from the center of the face. and blend out. With the Beauty Blender, it is going to give you the most flawless, natural looking finish. Now, why do I start in the center of my face? Because the center of my face is typically where I want the most coverage. And then, so I'll get the most coverage in the center of my face, and then to get like that natural blended look, once you start working it on the outside because you do have product on your sponge and so basically you're just taking whatever product is left over and putting it on the outside of your face. And I do have some texture right here. Uh, most of the time I don't bring foundation on this area just simply because it really amps it up but um, just for today's sake I will do it. And because it's just dry and patchy there that you, you can't change it. If you have any texture on your skin, you have to be really, really careful about what foundation you're using because sometimes certain foundations will kind of grab and cling to it. Okay, now on this side, I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to use a stippling brush and I will show you guys how I use that. Sometimes if I am going to put on concealer, I will just leave this under eye area blank here because the more products you layer on, the better chance you have of creasing. So if you are someone that is going to put on concealer, whether you're trying to conceal or highlight, it is perfectly okay to leave that under eye area blank, put your foundation on, and then when you come back with your found with not with your foundation, then when you come back with your concealer, you don't have that additional layer and it's less chances of creasing. All right, next with the stippling brush, and the same motion that I'm doing with the beauty blender, I'm just going to do with the stippling brush. Now, I will say, with a bigger stippling brush, you are going to have a harder time getting up under the eye area, so please keep that in mind. Now, if you're using, if you like using a buffing brush or flat kabuki, you just, if you don't do so much as the stippling motion or the beauty blender, the um, dabbing on the face. With um, buffing brushes, you tend to swirl. And I found that when you do that, you kind of get a little bit of streaks on the face. That's why I'm not a huge fan. If I have the foundation on and I see in a certain area that I need to do a little bit further blending, then I will take a buffing brush just to blend out a certain area, especially if we're talking contour cream products. I will definitely use a buffing brush for that. Then I'm feeling like I want a little bit more additional coverage. When you're building up your skin with foundation, don't put a whole nother layer of foundation on your face. Only put the extra coverage where you think you need it. And then something else I didn't really touch on. If you are color correcting, color correct before foundation because color correcting will keep you from putting on too much foundation. I feel like when people put on their foundation before concealer or color correcting, that's one way that you get nice and cakey. Color correct first and you'll be amazed at how much foundation you don't need. Also, easy. Don't go too heavy handed with color correctors because especially if you're using more of a salmon or orange based one, it will show through your foundation if you've put on too much. All right, 
so foundation is on the skin I feel like it looks natural it's not too much it's just enough for me whenever I'm doing foundation it's just basically to even out my skin tone I do have some darker spots on my face from previous acne scarring I'm not someone that's like that wants to cover up every single thing on my face because I feel like when everything is covered it doesn't look natural and everyone has little spots or whatnot on their face and if I see a few of those popping through it's not a big deal to me it's okay but like I said just to overall balance out everything on my face now all right guys I am back got some blush on eye makeup and lipstick going on little highlight action I am digging this look so now that I've done this I know a few of you are probably thinking oh well how did you do the bronzer or what did you do for the highlight x y and z if you want to see like a full-on just face routine all the way from skin prep foundation highlighter concealer blush all that jazz let me know in the description bar all right but other than that I really hope this was helpful for you again this is what works for me maybe if you have the same skin type as I do you can give it a try or pick and choose try different things see what works for you all right guys so thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye